You, you're a new Thank bookmark you. for people who still read books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's complicated. Uh, <laughs> I was just trying to stay with the family. <laughs> <laughs> all those oh, are going to be <laughs> all the whole thing. You can file everywhere you went. It's so ingrained in us, I can't give people me two lines anymore. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Best and Buster Mine. Youngsters, go ahead and come on up front. That would be you. <laughs> there you go. No, I can't. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This mine, this, this, this mine is located between two of the richest mining discoveries in the Comstock. North side of Biscon, Virginia, is $180 million, gold and silver. Yeah, and that's one hundred eighty million eighteen sixty dollars. <laughs> that mine was known as the Big Bonanza. That's where the title for the famous TV series came from. If you watched it, you'd know little Joe Hoss and Ben yes. come down to Virginia City every day. Mm -hmm. On horseback from Lake Tahoe in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a miracle of time. <laughs> South of us, the Gould Curry gets 60 million. Best and Boucher thought, put a mine in between the two, we'll get rich. They did $438. <laughs> Not all the mines out here were successful. Best and Boucher each lost a million dollars on this mine. The map here. Let me have you step over the side and just put your camera out in the middle. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> the map's the entire Comstock load, named for Henry P. Comstock, one of the original prospectors. All those rectangles are the mining claims active during the heyday, late 1800s. Only 15 of all those mines actually made the owners rich. The blue line is an underground pipeline run from Martlet Lake, way above Tahoe. They had to bring water from that far away. The ground in this area contained a lot of minerals. One of the minerals is arsenic. Yeah, boy. <laughs> That's why you don't find a single well on any of these rural properties. You guys ever heard of arsenic? Yeah. You know what it is? No. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. You're way ahead of a lot of kids your age. It kills me. It, 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 <laughs> it's a pretty bad poison. It used to be used in rat poison. Mm. It naturally occurs in the ground all through this area. I've heard of it. Well, just don't drink any groundwater while you're on <laughs> Or lick any rocks. The red, <laughs> line, the red line, Virginia Truckee Railroad, built the whole lumber and supplies down from the Sierras. Take ore from the mines to the mills and refineries, the Carson River. Mm -hmm. This nice straight green light at the bottom, the famous Sutro Tunnel. Adolf Sutro knew they needed to ventilate the mines as well as drain off dangerously hot water encountered in the deeper mines. Great deal of geothermal activity through most of Nevada. The deeper you go, the hotter it gets. The water here sometimes as much as 175 degrees. Wow. Yeah. The tunnel started in Dayton, about four miles that direction as the crow flies. <laughs> that means in a straight line. <laughs> it ended nearly 1,200 feet deep below Virginia City. It took nine years cost almost four million dollars. By the time the tunnel was finished, most of the mines above that level had been mined out. It made the tunnel completely useless. But Sutro kept himself aware of how the mines were working. He knew long before it was done it wasn't going to work. Kept the information to himself until he was able to sell the tunnel. <laughs> 
for eight million dollars. Oh Took all that money right back to San Francisco, invested in real estate, got a lot of welfare. Mm -hmm. Also became mayor of San Francisco for a while. That's why there are so many landmarks in San Francisco with the Sutro name on. Before we head in, Call the people if you like, you can grab a hard hat. Oh, yeah. I'm five feet, I'm still. <laughs> not my first rodeo. <laughs> Shorter people, if you can get more, just keep an eye on the taller people. <laughs> and you are welcome. You hear me scream, duck. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're you sure. are. <laughs> you guys want to come back here, though. Okay, that's it. Jake, Jake, Jake. Okay. Connor, Jake, you want to stay with us? Okay. We're going to watch the stick. Don't poke anybody. Okay. We'll get in their way. Uh, what we're going to do when I come to stops like this, I can get about six or seven of you folks in the front. Go come in and take a look, check it out. After you check it out, we'll get this lot moved a little past. This, this, you guys, please, you're plenty far enough. Okay. This is the powder room where they store dynamite, blasting caps, and pieces. When they opened the mine for tours, 1979, just come on in. They opened the mine for tours, 1979. Found three cases of unused dynamite, more than 100 years old. Now, dynamite, the older it gets, the more unstable it becomes. That means you don't need busting caps and fuses anymore. You just have to drop it. But don't worry, a special company was hired to be good times for all. Of this dynamite. Before we go on, I'll tell you about the wood. Those darker posts are the original showing timbers, about 150 years old. That lighter wood is reinforcement, make sure everyone's safe. But the original ponderosa pine, which all the mines out here were short with, probably still strong enough to hold the mine up fine all by itself. 